Hey, it's Minute Book Reports, and in this video, I want to talk about The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. And I think it's gonna be the best book that I've read in 2018. And I know that's hard to say. That's like watching a movie early in the year and you think, oh yeah, this is gonna be the best movie, and yet there are blockbusters to come during the summer and during the fall. But I really think that this book will probably be the best book that I've read all year. And I want to talk about why I think that. You know, The Jungle has always been one of those books that I had on my shelf that I looked at and it looked impressive. And I looked at it and I thought, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll read it one day but I never got around to actually reading it because when I picked it up and I turned to the first chapter, it was boring and I didn't like it. And so I gave it a chance this time and I muscled through that first chapter. And in fact, in a lot of ways, I would encourage people if they were gonna read the book, maybe they should skip the first chapter because really it's not what I feel is essential to the story. The story really starts when the, the family goes to Chicago. So I, I feel like if, you get discouraged by the first chapter, maybe skip past it and then just start with chapter two. The plot of the story is pretty simple. It's about a family from Lithuania who comes to Chicago and they want to live out that American dream and they work in the meat packing industry and they are exposed to all of it and it's it's pretty bad in Chicago. And so they eventually kind of go through the ups and the downs. They, they get a lot of money and then they lose a lot of money and, and they struggle and, and that's this story. So it's not necessarily a happy story, but it's a story that's very real. So if you're expecting this story to be about an actual jungle, like the Jungle Book, it's not even close. But it's a different type of jungle. It's a concrete and a very imprisoning jungle. So the first point I wanna bring up is how difficult this book was for me in the beginning and really how unattractive I thought this book was. But I struggled through it and it was worth it. The first chapter was very difficult, like I mentioned. There are a lot of difficult names if you're not familiar with uh, that culture, the Lithuanian culture, like I'm not, then it became very difficult to pronounce the names and understand the names. And, and so that was a, a big hurdle, plus you don't know where the story is going. But I thought chapter two on did a really great job. And another thing I wanna point out is the writing style in this story was one that I didn't think I would like because it had very little dialogue. A lot of it was just description. A lot of it was just telling you what people were thinking. A lot of it was telling you what is happening around you, what things look like. And for the most part, that's kind of boring because it's it's telling you rather than, than, than you figuring out on your own through dialogue, through circumstances. But the author does such a great job. There are like nuggets of amazing amazing metaphors amazing sort of imagery in the story i think in most books it would be long-winded and i probably wouldn't appreciate it but i think in the circumstances of the story it's it's really nice it, the author does a really great job i've never worked in a meat packing factory but i did live near one and the smell was pretty terrible they would I assume kill the, the, the cows and cut them up and, and prepare the beef and we all ate it. But this story and the way that it's described, especially early on when Jurgis is in the factory and he's kind of taking the factory tour and he's going around and seeing all the different sort of levels and rooms and, and areas, it is pretty descriptive. And it's one of those stories where, you know, there's not too many stories that would impact me in, in terms of making me want to change my lifestyle. But this was one of the stories that I, I considered for just a moment, just a moment. I thought, you know, maybe I don't need to be eating as much meat. Not that I'm going to cut it out completely, but maybe I don't need to eat as much. And I know that the conditions are not like that anymore. At least I hope they're not like that anymore. But it just made me think about, wow, that's pretty gross and of course it's gross for the animals but really it was gross for the workers and and that's one of the things that I never really thought about I guess when we get food I don't really think about what it took to get from the cow to the package you know like I just or my plate I, I just think oh wow look look this is just a piece of meat it's amazing it tastes good you know and when I went out to dinner I thought about that as I was staring at my piece of meat on my plate I thought wow people actually had to prepare this and not just cook it but they actually had to kill the animal and then they had to cut it up and transport that meat all the way over here to this restaurant and I thought wow never thought about that before another thing that I never thought that would come up is I don't recommend this book for for kids or for high schoolers or 
even college kids and and that's not to say that they cannot handle that because it's you know it's not that they can't understand the story it's that i'm not sure if people of that age can appreciate the story as much and again that's not to say that they can't understand the plot and what's going on but i know for myself if i were to have read this story in high school or younger or even in college i wouldn't have understood it and i wouldn't have appreciated it and, and more importantly I wouldn't have been able to empathize with the family as much because it's about a struggling family. It's about this system of capitalism that if you are not in the workforce, you kind of have no idea about it. You you may, may you may see it and and you may observe it from 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 afar, but it's it's different when you're actually in it. You know, it's different when you are having to work and you get frustrated and you take these types of jobs that are kind of menial and you wonder why you're doing it because you're seeing well i'm getting paid you know this much and meanwhile the the bosses are, are getting paid this much and how do i get up the the, the chain and, and and it's it's the struggle of of a struggling worker that you you begin to feel and and i'm glad that i'm not in that position anymore but you know definitely out of college when i had to find whatever work i could taking two or three jobs i felt that way and that struggle is is real and the way that i think you can empathize with the family in this story is by going through that uh, yourself and, and that may not necessarily be even in college it maybe it may happen later on in life but i know for me one of the saddest moments was when the family was buying the house and they had these houses for some of the immigrant families and they had all this fine print and 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 basically the, the deal was that they would put a lot of money down on these houses and they would have to pay out uh, so many payments and it basically was like renting but if they missed the payment basically they gave up the house which is very similar to a mortgage and and that's one of the things that i never understood when i was a kid or even in college but it took me buying a place to really understand that pressure you know it, it, where you put so much money down into a place with a down payment and, and you're putting in mortgage payments every every month and if you cannot make a payment it's all gone and that pressure and that that fear and that, I guess, that devastation of, is that really gonna happen? Like, that's something that people who pay mortgages can completely understand, or, or even to some extent, pay rent can understand, because the family was having to pay rent before, and they just looked at the conditions, and they thought, we gotta get out of here. I, I, we don't wanna pay rent anymore, we want to own. And that is something that is extremely relatable if you're, again, out of college, and you're working, and you're just trying to save money, you're trying to survive, you're trying to figure out what's gonna happen, what's going on, how do you fit in an economy that seems to be going against you. So again, it's not that children or high schoolers or college students cannot understand this story, but I think that to really empathize and to really understand, to make that, that really strong connection with the family, with, with, with all the characters who are just struggling, I, I, I think that it takes some life experience. And so I'm glad that I waited, in a way, to read this story when I was well, well, well out of high school. Well, well, well out of college, although not, not, too, not too well. But I was out of college enough and it, it, it made me appreciate all those things. And, and I know that people are struggling right now with that. And it's not just a young person thing or a millennial thing. This is a, 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 an issue where a lot of people are struggling you know, well into their 50s, 60s, 70s. They're, they're struggling for, for basic things like food and housing and work. I mean, those are real issues. And in reading this book, you, you, you kind of, you some, something kind of starts to warm up inside of you especially if you've experienced that one of the things that really stood out to me was was the notion of in a workforce like the meat packing industry basically you come in and you're super young and you're energetic you have a lot of energy right and and they they like that the boss is like that and they, they they take you and you feel special because you got hundreds and thousands of guys around you who are wanting to get a job but they pick you right so you feel special and then they put you down in, in, in a certain job and then you just are working away, you're working away, it's kind of dangerous and then you get tired and then it gets cold and then you're not making as much money anymore. And then you get older and then you are not as useful. Maybe you slow down a little bit and then they hire someone who was willing to work less than you so they can save money and someone who's younger than you 
so they work with more energy and soon you find yourself out in the crowd and 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 to sort of see Jurgis make that journey is, is is kind of sad because it doesn't just apply to the meatpacking industry there are a lot of other industries where they take you when you're young when you have a lot of energy when you when you're so excited and then they kind of use you up and then they kind of push you on the side to bring in the next group of of young people of energetic people and then they they eventually get older and they push them aside and that's one of the things that was kind of sad you know to think about that you have these these people who who they're so excited they they want to work and yet the reality is they're not really going to work that long because that industry is going to use up their best years their best energy and they're just going to push them aside just just kick them out for the next group to come in to work for less money to work faster and more efficient and then they'll get pushed aside and I guess that was just kind of sad. It made me think about that kind of stuff. So again, I think that The Jungle is probably the best book I'm gonna read in 2018. And I know it's April, so it's early, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it will be. It had a very profound impact on me. I'm not gonna be a, a socialist or anything like that. I'm not gonna turn to, to, to that way of thinking, but it, it got me thinking about how people struggle today in the economy. I mean, it was so sad that this family was working so hard and they weren't getting ahead that's that's the thing is they had so many financial obligations it was so corrupt in in the workforce you're just thinking how does anybody get out of this i really recommend this book if you have a chance to read it i know it's really long and the chapters took me about 20 minutes to read each chapter and that was kind of discouraging it took me a long time to read this book but i really enjoyed it i really like to follow the journey of jurgis and where he was going because i had no idea it seemed like every time he had a job and then he'd lose a job and then he'd be a hobo and he'd be begging and then he'd find a job and then he'd lose a job and then he'd go back to begging and it was kind of sad but it, it was nice to go along with that journey i'm glad that's not my life i'm very very blessed and i'm thankful for what i have and it's just nice though that i've had those experiences where i wasn't a beggar but i can completely understand how it feels when you feel like you're giving your 100 percent best at a job and it, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere and or maybe you have two or three jobs and you're working so hard and you just the, you're, you're, you're making very very small progress barely any savings because there's so many expenses to go along with that job so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye